Okay, this is a police question. We have got particles uh, P and Q. Uh, they're held at rest, but then the system is released and Q starts to descend. So we have acceleration in that direction, one third G. Okay, and if we know if that's going in that direction, that means P is going in that direction with the same acceleration because the string is tall. Right now. A, we need to work out tension. Um, if I'm going to work out tension in the connected particle system, I need to take this part of the system. So I want it for Q, so let's just draw Q. Q is going down because of its mass times gravity, and it's being held up or prevented from falling at its maximum speed by tension. Okay, now I want a positive T, so I'm going to resolve in that direction. So my T is positive. I have a negative 3mg in the other direction. That's equal to 3m times acceleration. But I know what acceleration is, so that means that T minus 3mg is equal to 3m times negative one third of g now remember that's negative because we we've picked the upward direction as positive and the acceleration is downwards so now i can see that i've got three times one third that's going to give me negative one so i've got t minus three mg equals minus one g and if I put all of my mg's on one side, I've got that t equals 2 mg. Okay, so that's the right answer for a. Now for b, I'm told that I've got to show that k equals 1.5. You can see k is actually the unknown in the mass. I'm going to write the equation in motion for Q to be. So that's P. P also is being held up by tension and is being pulled down by its weight, sorry, its mass, so Km times gravity. I am going to go in that direction because that's the direction I'm moving in. Um, so now I've got my tension pulling it up. I've got kmg pulling it down, and that's equal to km, its mass, times acceleration. Okay. Now this time, I know what t is, because I've just worked that out. So my t is 2mg, and then I've got minus kmg, and that's equal to k. Um, and again, I know what the acceleration is. They're connected together, so they're in the same. Um, they're moving at the same acceleration. Now this time, remember Q is accelerating down, which means P is accelerating up. So this time, the, the acceleration is going in the direction I'm resolving. So that's a positive one third. So now I can say that two m g is equal to a third of kmg plus another whole kmg okay so that means that 2mg is equal to four thirds of kmg and therefore i can actually divide both sides by mg now I have 2 equals 4 thirds of k, and therefore k is equal to, remember, multiplied by the reciprocal, dividing by fraction, I get 6 over 4, 3 over 2, which we, we know is 1.5. So we have shown that k equals 1.5. That's taking care of it.
time C is a definitions question. So C says, um, state how you've used the information that pulley is smooth. Well, if there's no friction, then the tension for P is equal to the tension for C. Okay, and we use that fact because basically we said in part B that our T was equal to 2mg, which was the same tension we got for C. So right, we're on to the last part of the question now. So the last part of the question is um, where something new has happened. Let's see. After descending for 1.8 seconds, the particle Q reaches the plane and it's immediately brought to rest by the impact with the plane. The initial distance between P and the pulley is such that in the subsequent motion, P does not reach the pulley. The P is not stopped in any way, it moves freely. We're going to show the greatest height in meters reached by P above the plane is 1.26 G. So again, this is a show question, so we're going to show all of our steps. That's our goal, 1.26 G is the maximum. So what we need to do is think about this. So we've got a pulley, we've got P, which is moving upwards, and we've got Q, which hits the ground after 1.8 seconds. So we know that initially the whole system is moving with acceleration of one third of g. So we need to know, firstly, we need to know what's the speed that it hits the ground at. Okay, and we need to know how far it falls. So we need to have a distance as well. Okay, well, we know that starts from rest. So we can work out um, its speed and its acceleration. So let's see, right, so V1, what do we know? We know that V is equal to U plus T. Let's see that. Okay, and we know that U is equal to zero because the system was at rest when it started. So we know the acceleration because our acceleration was one third g. And we know the time that was 1.8. So if we multiply that, we'll get our velocity. Um, then we need to know how far it falls. So we know that s equals ut plus half a t squared. Now again, it was at rest, so ut is zero. We do a half times our, our acceleration, which was g over three, times our time, which is 1.8 squared. So that gives us 27 over 50 g, or 0 0.5. Now remember, even though that's a term to g, that's the distance. Right. Okay. So now, the second part. This is the important bit. Because this is kind of the first part of our, of our movement. As Q descends and stops. The second part of our movement is where... Now, there's our pulley. And Q is on the ground. Q is stopped. And now our string is no longer taut. There's no tension in our string. P has not instantly stopped. So P is only moving under gravity. So then what we need to do is work out what's the highest point. Now, 
what we did before when we were doing projectiles basically we when we said when we threw a ball it did that and then we were trying to find that highest point and the fact that we knew was at that point v equals zero it basically got to a point where it was stationary there was no speed no upward speed and then it started to accelerate back down again so we're going to do the same thing so we're going to use v squared equals u squared plus 2a s and, and what we need to do is use the u that u will be the velocity that it q hit the ground with so that's the starting speed with p moving freely under gravity so what we need to do is use the velocity is zero that's equal to um, my initial speed which was 0 0.6 squared plus 2 now remember we're going upwards because the initial movement is upwards because so gravity is negative remember gravity is the only force acting on it equals s okay and then that gives me all this s2 this is the moving freely being 0 0.18 Okay, so now I've got an S2 and an S1. Now, this is the bit, this is where people make mistakes. So Q, Q went down by our distance S1. So that means it started at that height above. So that means when we want to find the highest, high, highest point that P reaches, P is already this distance above the ground. So to get the highest point, I have to take S1, where it started, plus it moved the same distance again because it was pulled at that much further high up by Q. So I've got two lots of S1, and then Q stopped moving and P movement itself, which is our last one, our S2. And when I add those three together, I get my total of 1.26 G. And you can see as the question wants an answer in terms of G, that's why I've left the G in all of our calculations all the way through. I hope that's clear for everybody.